This is Carcon Carne, a Q101 podcast. I'm James Van Osdell, and Carcon Carne is presented by Alex Ross Art. Alex Ross, one of the all-time greats. There is no one like Alex Ross when it comes to comics and graphic novels. And just this past week, James Gunn said that his version of Superman for the upcoming movie that's coming out next year, the new Superman movie, James Gunn's version is based on what Alex Ross did with the character. He's the best. Check it out. Carcon Carney, also sponsored by the American Lung Association. This coming Sunday, it's happening. The fight for air climb. Join me. We are going to the top. We're going to try to go to the top of the Oak Brook Terrace Tower, the tallest building in the Chicago suburbs. And to get involved, to be part of it, go to fightforairclimb.org slash Chicagoland. You can even take money off using my promo code, Carney, C A R. E. It's an indoor experience. It's Sunday, March 10th, entirely customizable. You can go up the 30 floors once, twice, three times a stairwell, whatever works for you. I will be there. I want you to be part of it with me. The fight for air climb. Doesn't matter how fit you are. Doesn't matter how old you are. You can do this and we can do this together. The Oak Brook Terrace Tower, Sunday, March 10th, the fight for air climb. I will see you on the stairs. Carcon Carne also sponsored by Easy Automation. A smart home connects virtually all the technology in your house. With an Easy Automation installed smart home system, you and your family can control nearly every device and system in the house in ways that are easy and fun to use. Transform your living space with cutting edge home automation. Experience seamless control over your audio and your video, your lighting, your climate security, and more. Embrace the future of smart living, your home, your rules. Get a quote by visiting easy, easy-automation.net or call my guy Dan. His back pocket is ready for your phone call. He's got the phone on vibrate. He's sitting there. He knows this episode's coming out. He's waiting for you to call him. Call my guy Dan to talk about smart homes. Easy automation. 630-730-3728. 630-730-3728. Okay, here we go. And it begins with the L going overhead. This bodes well. It is Carcone Carne on Lake Street, just west, just west of Ogden. I'm James Van Alsel with a returning favorite, returning guest cinephile, Stephanie Sack. Hello. We're outside a harp factory. If I had a nickel, uh, we'll get into the reason why, but we're outside of Healy Harps on uh, Lake Street. This was your choice. You'll explain all this at some point, right? At some point. One of the many reasons to have you back on is the fact that movies suck. <laughs> we, we've talked about this. There's nothing good. and Not only is there nothing good playing at your local Cineplex, when you watch the trailers, you realize that that's a situation that's not going to change anytime soon. I, I see so many trailers and think, yeah, not interested, don't care. So I just saw a trailer the other day at a movie theater chain that shall go unnamed. And I felt as if I had been physically assaulted after that, that I saw the like trailer. A, that seems like a little much to say. Like, how, I was exhausted. That, I was, that sounds more I was, appropriate. I, I, I felt as if something had come at me in a way that did not have my best interest in mind. And it was a movie trailer. It, was it a horror movie or was it just a, an obnoxious blockbuster? I have no recollection. Well, the point is, there's a lot of trash out there. In fact, it's predominantly garbage out there. Agreed. Like, I, I don't see trailers before a movie and think, oh, can't wait to see that. Can't wait to see that. Oh, good. I That feeling's gone. And I come to this place for magic. But the feeling is completely gone, which is why you're here. You provide alternatives to traditional 
blockbuster cinematic fair, you are plugged into the art house theater community, the, the cinema community, the, the stuff that's on the screen that we should be paying attention, attention to that we may not be aware of. You're our guide. Why, thank you. It is an honor to to guide, to be a guide. And I like to think that I am guided myself to the fun places. Oh, we've got a little uh, sonic companion above. Me too. But perhaps those people on that L are off to something offbeat. Perhaps. Or, you know, hyper-local or a little underground. Or maybe just home. Or maybe just home. Maybe yeah. all of those are the same. True. Um, but I am, it's always a delight to be here to discuss and reveal and um, share what is offbeat and shiny and sparkly and really fun and cool in Chicago when it comes to cinema. Because we all love movies and we want to see movies that aren't a waste of time. I mean, I've always been of the mindset, if I have two or three hours to spend on a movie, I want to walk away from the experience feeling like I just enjoyed something substantive which is why i don't often see movies more than once because i feel like if i have those two or three hours i want to experience something different that's always a, an interesting question actually like what do you want to feel after you see a movie and if you want to feel as if you've seen something that is intellectually satisfying i think that's a wonderful goal for cinema mine is if i leave a movie and i ask myself how did they do that then I know it's a movie that I would either like to see again or am confident in recommending to other people. And that could be anything from the way they told the story to the way they shot a, a sequence. I mean... Lots of magic. Lots of magic. Lots of it. All right, let's start with... Uh, let's start with Morricone. Ooh. Ennio Morricone. Yes. Uh, there's a lot going on at the Music Box in the month of March tied to Morricone. Tell me what... What's happening? Oh, it's Morricone at the music box in Morricone, March. Morricone, Morricone? More, well, you know, at this point, I'm just going to go with Morricone. Okay. That's, you know, that that's to, when, when in Rome, ironically enough, <laughs> you know. Um, so, uh, the music box, which your audience knows is the physical manifestation of my soul. Mm -hmm. I don't know if is, they know that. They do know. I'm, re I'm reminding them of that. Got because it. I think I've mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. um, they have programmed, as usual, an amazing series of... In this case, a compilation of composer Ennio Morricone's, I would say, most iconic, but also most offbeat, most underappreciated, and in some ways, most revered films that he scored. He was a very famous composer, Oscar-winning, uh, um, lauded over generations. He worked over with 400 films. Over 400 films he he scored, and he worked with directors who were high art, lowbrow. Um, the list of people with whom he worked is a million miles long. And one of them with whom he worked for three films, Dario Argento, actually five films, but three films. L. L. What the L? Too easy. It's too, ah, uh, low hanging fruit. So, um, the music box is going to screen one of my favorite films by one of my favorite directors. Can I guess? Yes. Is it the bird with the crystal plumage? Ding, 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 ding. Or should I say, cheep, 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 cheep. Uh-huh. 1970. This is Argento's first movie? It is Argento's first fully directed, fully scripted, fully realized film. Okay. And what makes this a must-see? Well, first of all, it is bonkers. It really doesn't make Everything a lot of sense. Everything you like seems vaguely bonkers <laughs> and lurid. Bonkers and lurid. I feel like we just came up with like a record label. Or, or a 70s porn title. <laughs> Again, those are sometimes the same. Yeah. So this one is not particularly lurid, although I love it when it's lurid. This is bonkers. It's it's like Argento burst on the scene of Italy cinema, of Italian cinema in the late 60s behind the, um, doing things on crew, um, writing, assistant directing. And then with The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, he burst on the international scene as this very accomplished, uh, uh, very swing for the fences young director. And man, this is just quite a debut. There's all sorts of crazy cinematography because it was lensed by Fattorio Storaro, a longtime favorite of mine in terms of cinematography. And he worked with um, on Apocalypse Now. Okay. And I mean, he's just another master. So you've got these two masters working together for the visuals. You've got Argento's uh, classic giallo 
film, a giallo, of course, is when you've got mysterious killers running around glamorous cities with black gloves, like, you know, we might do later tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one at the music box, of course, is one where I will absolutely be Dario Argento as part of the Morricone overview at Music Box in March on March 22nd. Be now, there. Now, can we talk about Morricone uh, without mentioning... See. Without mentioning the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think it's impossible, so we just Th- that's did that. The f- that's the first thing that I think comes to people's minds. Well, that is arguably how he crossed over to the American yeah. market. That's really the film with which he is most associated in uh, our little neck of the cinematic woods. But also, The Thing is part of this. Cannot be a screening of The Thing at the music box. If you have not seen John Carpenter's 1982 The Thing, or even if you have... Stop everything, nab your ticket, and go see the thing. Would you say stop everything? I just did. You did. Also, Red Sonia, a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more. Mm. Uh, the Untouchables. Yes. I mean, is there a more Chicago experience than seeing that movie at the music box? I could make a, f- I could suggest a few more titles, but yeah. I, no, not right now. And Once Upon a Time in America. Oh, that, beautiful that's a films. Film. Yep. Yes, man, that's a, that's a, what a vision. More than 400 scores for TV and film. Ennio Morricone. Uh, awesome programming at Music Box. Before we get into some of the other stuff that, that's rattling around in your head, mm. I, I do want to mention, March 10th, I'm teaming up with the American Lung Association to help them save lives. I've committed to climbing the tallest building in the suburbs. You know what that is? No clue. It's the Oak Brook Terrace Tower. Oak Brook Terrace that's Tower. True. I'm going to climb it on foot, taking the, taking the stairs. Sunday, March 10th, it's an indoor experience. Get yourself registered fightforairclimb.org slash Chicagoland and you can take money off 10 bucks off with your registration when you enter the code CARNE C-A-R-N-E at checkout see you on the stairs that's what we call a mid-roll um that sounds amazing James I hope you do really well thank you well it'll be it'll be interesting it all is interesting I don't think I'm going 30 floors on this okay stairs are hard they are and there, there's like more of them. It seems. Yeah. It, they only stop when they're done. It's it's about it's about showing up and supporting. Um, I, I, I'd love to say see you at the top. We know that's not going to happen. But anyone, any skill level, any age, welcome to participate. Fight for Airclimb. Org. I love it. But wait a minute. I do want to take a quick sidebar, and congratulate you for your win. Um, <laughs> Thank ladies you. and gentlemen of Chicago and elsewhere. I'm hanging out with a winner right now. <laughs> Do you want to? You always were when you did this podcast. Uh, Carquin Carney for a the second winner for the second year in a row. Uh, best music podcast as voted by the readers of the Chicago Reader. I'm incredibly grateful. Thank you for mentioning that. Mentioning that, Stephanie. But I'm yeah. very proud of you. Congratulations. You. A lot of hard work, as you know, goes into this. Yes. So we're in front of a harp factory, which. I've probably driven by this intersection a kajillion times. A kablillion, even. And I don't think it's ever registered to me that there's a harp factory at the corner of Lake and Ogden. And not only is there a harp factory at that corner, it says, Harp Makers to the World. Since 1889. Like, this This is the harp place. Been, yeah. This is it. We're at the epicenter of harpdom. This is, this is, yeah. If we're, you, we're, at a, we're Mecca. We're making, we're making our, our pilgrimage. If you want a harp, don't fuck around. You're coming here. <laughs> this is your place. Right now. <laughs> right. Not right now. Don't no, not right they're now. Not, they're not open. There'll be no harp. But why, why did you, of all the places, like, we're not even eating. Why are, why are we in front of a harp factory? Why did I meet you on Darken Lake Street? In front of a harp factory. Well, this is where I live, obviously. This is my corner. <laughs> Perfect. Um, it's cold out. I'm glad I was able to scoop you up. Yeah, thank you. Much appreciated. So, um, one of the things that I like best is live music to film, to silent film. Mm, it's a silent film. It's a, a series of silent films that we're going to talk about. So, at the good old Alliance Française at 54 West Chicago Avenue, um, there is going to be this Friday... Friday the 8th. Friday the 8th at 2 p.m. for free, a screening of Alice Guy and Alice L. Guy. Oh, L. L. Bye. Which is French for woman, right? <laughs> don't, don't make me, don't make me speak French. Okay. Um, so Alice Guy. Alice Guy. And she is 
and was France's first female filmmaker. She was active between the years of 1894 and 1906, I think. That, that's really the first. I yeah. mean, that was like, that was right around the time these harps started getting made. For even. real. This is a long time ago. And Alice made black and white short films, and they're very whimsical, and they're going to be screened with a live harp accompanist. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's really cool. So the dulcet sounds of harp will be beautifully matched with the images and motions of Alice Guy at the Alliance Francaise, and it will be very très chic. So this will be in the afternoon. It'll be 2 o'clock on a Friday, this coming Friday. I, I'm fascinated by the fact... I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that films were made back at the turn of that century. Like, I know... I guess I know they were, but it's amazing that they still exist. Not only is it amazing that they still exist, James, how rad is it that they're being screened now? Yeah, that people care enough to preserve them, show them, and go watch them. Please help us preserve them, come attend when we show them, and enjoy watching them. What else? I know you've got something else in, in your in your pocket, so to speak. Yes. So my final um, nominee for what to nominee. do this March, yes, is a little bit um, out of my lane. It is an event in Highland Park, which is a suburb. It is. And it is at Madame Zuzu's. Sure. Billy Corgan's place. Billy Corgan's place. And it is a listening party. And it is a listening party. Well, I love listening parties just before we go down the Oh, my the God. We were path. talking about this before we started recording. Yes. I think listening parties should just be mandatory. Like, people need to hear albums start to finish. Well, I agree with that. We live in a very a la carte culture yes. as far as music can, I, I completely agree with that so we are going to uh, we're going to promote the art of album listening mm. with a mention of this event at Madame Zuzu's it is on March 22nd which is a Friday at 730 if I if I'm correct um, a listening party for you the have no re- notes this is all just I'll just up on here your that's yeah. right it is a listening party for the cures compilation of 1992's performances at Le Zenith in Paris. Which is French for the Zenith. It is. We oui, mm-hmm. see. Si, Raymond. And this is a, um, sort of a, a re-release of what they were playing at the time, which was their album Disintegration. So this is sort of the end of that tour. Well, so will you come back and do this again? I, I think... This is stuff that is just far enough off the beaten path. I think it's helpful that people hear about it. I'm delighted to be helpful by going off the beaten path, and I would be delighted to come back and proselytize further about all the awesome stuff there is to do in Chicago that's cinematic, sonic, and just totally badass. Yeah, proselytize on the corner of Lake and Ogden. Name name a better corner in which to proselytize. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Cinephile Stephanie Sack, thank you as always for keeping us plugged in to everything. Uh, I do want to mention one more time, this coming Sunday, March 10th, it is the Fight for Air Climb at the tallest building in the suburbs, the Oakbrook Terrace Tower. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put on sensible shoes. I'm going to put on something sweatpants-ish, and I'm going to try taking, taking it floor by floor and try to get as far as I can. I'd love for you to come with me. Fightforairclimb.org slash Chicagoland. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs>